Um, hello guys, so you are welcome to uh, our next example. And so now I want to look at case two in the previous video we talked about about four well five different cases. Okay, and we did an example for case one. So we want to look at case two and an example of that. So this is the case where we have a partial a fraction where the denominator um, has a linear factor which is repeated. Alright? 3x plus 2 is linear, but it's raised to the power 2. So how do you bring this into, um, into partial fractions? How do you decompose it? Okay? So when the uh, linear factors are repeated, this is what you do. You take a constant, constant again because it's linear, and divide by 3x plus 2. But it is raised to the power 2, and so you need another constant here, and then raised to all of this, 3x plus 2 raised to the power 2. So as long as what you have here is a linear factor, what you have here should be constant. But because it's repeated, that is why we need this as well. Okay? And so once again, we want to solve for A and B. So the idea is, in this case, just multiply through by 3x plus 2 squared, and this will cancel out. So if you multiply it by 3x plus 2 squared, I'm going to have x minus 1 here, okay? And that is equal to 3x plus 2 will cancel one of this, so I have a into 3x plus 2, okay? And then 3x plus 2 squared multiplies this, it will cancel all of this out, and I'm just left with b. So, um, I want to solve for um, for A and B. Okay, so I can choose any uh, two values of x, plug them in there, and solve for A and B, right? Or I can expand as uh, as we did before. So, for instance, if I expand this, I'm going to have x minus one to be equal to three a x, right? Plus two a plus another constant which is b. If I compare the coefficients, I have 3a would be equal to 1, right? The coefficient of x is 3a, that here is 1. So 3a is equal to 1, which implies that if I divide through by 3, a would be 1 over 3. Then I compare the constants. 2a plus b is equal to negative 1. But we know a already, so we can solve for b. Okay, let's come here. So this implies b is equal to negative 1 minus 2a. So that is negative 1 minus 2. I plug in a. a is 1 over 3. So I have negative 1 minus 2 over 3. Alright? That is negative 3 here, negative 5. So that I have negative 5 over, over 3. So b is this. So we know A and we know B. And so we can write our fraction in this form. X minus 1 over 3x plus 2 squared can be written as A over 3x plus 2. A is 1 over 3, right? All over 3x plus 2, right? And then B is negative 5 over 3 all over 3x plus 2 squared, right? So that is the solution. You can leave it as this, or you can write it in a more elegant way, right? You can rewrite this. You can bring the 3 down. You can bring the 3 down, the negative there. And this becomes 1 over 3 into 3x plus 2. I have a negative 5, the 3 comes down, and I have 3x plus 2 all raised to the power 2. Okay? So, whenever you have linear repeated, this is how you do it. Okay? This has to be squared. Remember to do that. And then you solve for a b and b, and then you can write your fraction as partial fractions. Okay, let's quickly do one uh, more example. We're going to take the example we did previously 
and just square one of the um, one of the uh, factors. Okay. So let's call this example two. Example two. Remember we had we had um, let's get rid of this and then. In the previous um, lesson, so let's call this 2. Remember, we had x plus 1 all over x minus 2, uh, x minus 3. This was a uh, quadratic uh, also, right? But now, let's square, let's square that, okay? Let's square that. So you have this. How do you how do you solve um, how do you decompose it into fractions? Same procedure. This is a linear factor x minus two. So I'll take a constant and divide by x minus two. Okay. But now I have a linear factor which is raised to the power two. It's repeated. Okay. So as we did in the previous example, what you do is that. You take another constant all over x minus 3 by the square. So you take another constant and then x minus 3 squared. And you square it. Okay? Imagine this wasn't there. If this wasn't there, this wasn't, wouldn't, wouldn't be there. And you just have this square. So you have this. Just as we did previously. Okay? So now we have three constants, A, B, and C, to solve for. A similar procedure from here. Multiply two by this denominator. Multiply each of this by that. Okay? So if I multiply this then by the denominator, it cancels out, then I have x plus 1. Okay? If I multiply by this, x minus 2 will cancel out x minus 2. So I'll left it with this. I'm left with A multiplied by x minus 3 all squared. See? Plus, if I multiply this term by all of this, x minus 3 will cancel one of these out. And I'll be left with 2 of them. So I have this, and x minus 2, and x minus 3. You see that? And then if I take this, all of this multiplied by this term, the x minus 3 squared will cancel x minus 3 squared. I'm left with x minus 2. So this will give me C multiplied by X minus 2. Okay? Good. So now here, you have to be clever. You could still expand. You can expand and compare the coefficients and all of that. But that will be longer. Alright? So I prefer to choose some values. If I choose 3, I'll cancel these guys in that. And I'll just solve C. You see? If I choose 2, this goes, this goes, and I'll solve for A. So it's easier. So let's x be equal to 2. Put 2 here. You have 3. 2 minus 3 negative 1 squared is positive 1. So that's A. Okay? 2 minus 3 is 0. This goes to 0. This goes to 0. So I just have A straight away. Alright? Then I let x be equal to 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. 3 minus 3 is 0. This goes. This is 0. That goes. 3 minus 3 is 1. 1 times C. C. So I have C. So I have A. I have C. C. So that's easy. Then we are left with what? B. How do we solve for B? So now you can choose any value of X. Okay? You can choose X equals 0, X equals 1, negative 1, whichever. Right? It's always easy to work with 0. So let's choose X. If you let x be equal to 0, this is 0, I'm going to have 1. Okay, this is 0. Negative 3 squared is 9, so I have 9 a. This is 0, that is 0. I have negative 2 times negative 3, that's positive 6. So I have plus 6 b, right? This is 0, so I have negative 2 c. Okay? We are solving for b because we know a and c. Alright, so 6b, 6b will be equal to what? I'm going to take these guys back, so I have 1 plus 2c minus 9a, 
right? So I have one, two, C is what? C is four, so you put four there. Nine, A is what? A is three, I put three here. So this gives me one plus eight minus 27. That is nine minus 27, that is negative 18, right? So 6B, 6B is equal to negative 18. Divide two by six, all right? 18 divided by six is three, so that is negative three. So we have A, we have B, and we have C. You put them back in here, and you have your partial uh, fractions, okay? So finally, you write down, I'm just going to come here. A is three, B is negative three, C is what? It's four. So this can be broken down, can be decomposed into this partial, partial fractions, all right? Good. So that is how you deal with linear factors, right? If they are repeated, if they are not repeated, this approach case one and case two will solve that. In the next lesson, we'll look at cases where you have irreducible quadratic factors and how you deal with that. Okay.